back. Introducing the Barbie and Ken Matrimony Collector Series. Order now and receive domestic Barbie house care accessories free, complete with the I don't care what I look like anymore because I'm married sweatsuit. And look at swinging Ken with his new friend, Shasta. See what happens when Barbie finds out. Introducing Nervous Breakdown Barbie. Just pull the string. I'll kill you. Do you hear me? I'll kill you. And just in time for Christmas, it's institutionalized Barbie. Yes, Barbie's not well, but you can make her better with Comeback Barbie fashion accessories. Now that she's dressed for success, put her in her very own office with the corporate Barbie environment playset, complete with wireless phones so she can patch things up with Ken. But wait, who's that answering the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning? It's Sensitive Steve, Ken's newest friend. You'll have hours of fun with the all-new Barbie's Life Limited Collector Series. Order now while quantities last. If a beautiful woman suddenly gives you flowers, then washes her hands several times, then begins to touch everything in the room, then performs a ritualistic display of hand-eye coordination simply to light a cigarette, followed by an impassioned interpretive dance, being very careful not to step on any of the many cracks in the floor, that's obsessive compulsion. It'll drive her mad. Yes, there's a, I'm, uh, I'm looking, no, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> no, I'm just browsing, thank you. What, there's no need to be nervous. Don't be nervous. Not nervous. Okay, why don't you tell me what it is you're looking for and perhaps I can, I can help you. I'm looking for love. Okay, uh, what kind of love are you looking for? Well, I was hoping if I, if, if I'm, if, I don't quite understand the question, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, we have a wide variety of love for you to choose from. Uh, we have, uh, starting with paternal love, maternal love, uh, sisterly love, it's about 1695, brotherly love, 1795, uh, universal love, that's 145.95. So you do get a t-shirt with that though, okay, we're out of stock right now, but we will be getting some in soon. Uh, tainted love, that's about 70, 70 some. Uh, there's unrequited love, puppy love, and crazy love, those are all about 53.50. Uh -huh. uh, but just so that you know, the tainted love, we don't have, we have a no refund policy on that. And also, we do have a special if you're interested in uh, puppy love, two for one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have love for a friend, that's $19,995. Love for mankind, $21,95. Love for your country, $27,95. Just a suggestion if, you, if you're interested in that one, um, I would go for the love for mankind. It's a little bit cheaper. It's basically the same, you know, it's a mm. better deal. Uh, love of God. That's sort of popular among those who are sick or dying. And uh, passionate, everlasting love. That's it. That's the one. Passionate, okay. everlasting love. That, that's the one. Okay, you found one you like. Great. Um, just, I'll be right back. One moment, please. Thank you. 
exactly what I was looking for. Good. This is Linda. Hi. Linda, this is... Gordy. Uh, Big Gordy. <laughs> Big Gordy. Big Gordy here would like some passionate and everlasting love. Do you think you could help him? Oh, yes, I think I can. Okay, great. Uh, well, just to make things a little bit more comfortable for you, Gordy, we're just going to get you to lay down on the counter here. Mm -hmm. If you can. Mm, that's great. Okay, Big Gordy. Mm -hmm. I want you to look into my eyes. Okay. I will love you more passionately than life itself. And oh. until the end of time, I will always love you. Ooh, nice meeting you. Oh. You know, Gordy, it's not every day someone finds passionate and everlasting love. That'll be thirty-five dollars, please. Okay. Cash. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. sitting at my table, about to eat my soup, when I noticed Carl, a friend of mine, conversing with a group. So I waved at him to join me for a reminiscent chat, and he promptly left his table and moved to where I sat. I couldn't help but notice near the conversation's close, a booger of substantial size dangling from his nose. It fluttered in and it fluttered out with every breath he took, and at the end of each exhale, the booger gently shook. My old friend Carl's dialogue became a foggy sea. My concentration never strayed from this booger facing me. He moved close to get confidential, but I did not get the scoop, for his head now hovered directly above my chicken gumbo soup. I turned away from the freakish sight for its form I could no longer bear. But when my courage returned to face him, the booger was no longer there. My horror became infinite. My revulsion met its peak. Did this wretched booger fall discreetly from his beak to find sanctuary amidst the chunks of ham and chicken in my bowl? What vile thoughts did booger cause in my now tormented soul? So, referring to the soup, I said, Carl, would you care to try a bit? In fact, I'm not that hungry. You can have the rest of it. Mm. Ah! <laughs> hey, fella, quit kicking sand in our faces. What man, the worst business on the beach. Listen here, you little runt. If you don't like it, find yourself another beach. That big bully, I'll get even. Someday. Oh, don't let that bully bother you. Darn it! I'm sick and tired of being pushed around. Suddenly, you own the beach. Well, now it's your turn to find another beach. Oh, Mac, you are my hero after all. Suddenly, it could happen to you. Shall we? If 
we were two typical Eastern Grey squirrels and winter was coming, and I forgot to store my nuts. And I found out you didn't forget to store your nuts, but I didn't know where your nuts were stored. Would I kill you? No. I would ask you where your nuts were, and if I could please eat some of your nuts so I too could survive the cold winter months. And if I were a nice squirrel, which I am, I would tell you where my nuts were, and then you would kill me, so you could have my nuts all to yourself. I wouldn't kill you, I'm a squirrel. Squirrels don't kill one another. Exactly. Squirrels don't kill one another. Secret agents do. I'm sorry, your analogy is inaccurate. I'm afraid I can't accept it. Okay. Okay, if I was a pit bull terrier, and you were the neighbor who lived next door, and my bone was in your yard, and you put it somewhere where I couldn't smell, would I kill you? No. I would merely whine and make gestures to the hole my bone was usually in, until my master figured out what it was I was trying to communicate to him, and eventually he would ask you, neighbor, have you seen my dog's bone? And you would say, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I just gave my wife the bone. She must have put it somewhere where your dog couldn't smell it. And you'd go get the bone and bring it back to me, and I'd lick you and be happy. But your bone has no value to me. I don't want your bone. For the analogy to work, your bone must be just as important to me as it is to you. Okay, okay. If you were a snowy egret, and I was a hunter, and it was my wife's birthday, and I love my wife so much that if some punks did anything to her in an alley, I'd fill a sock up with quarters. I know about 35 or 40 dollars worth of I wouldn't care, I'd just start bashing. That's how much I love her. And I was making a pretty summer hat as a, as a birthday present for her because I was too poor to buy one from the store. And all I needed to accent the hat perfectly were three graceful plumes from the butt of the nearly extinct snowy egret. So I go out into the woods and I see you standing around by a tree or something, but I don't notice any plumes on you because you love your plumes so much that if some punks did anything to them, you'd start bashing. And, and you suspected that someday a hunter might be, be making a pretty summer hat uh, accented with graceful plumes, so you took them off and hid them in a safe place. Would I kill you? No! I, I would threaten to kill you if you didn't tell me where you hid your graceful plumes. I can't talk. I'm an egret. But you can try a rough map on the ground with your beak. All right. Then what would you do? I would follow the directions you gave me until I found where you hid your graceful plumes. Then? I'd go home and finish making the hat because her birthday's the next day. No, you wouldn't. What do you mean, no, I wouldn't? I know what I'm doing. I'm the one doing it. You don't know what I'm thinking. I don't remember saying you were telepathic, Snow Egret. No. But if I am an egret, intelligent enough to draw a map on the ground with my beak, why should I believe that a hunter, too poor to afford a summer hat for his wife, wouldn't simply shoot an already plucked snow egret for an inexpensive and delicious birthday dinner that she'd probably enjoy as much, if not more, than the stupid hat you made her? Get, get out! Get out of here! I put a lot of work into that hat! A lot of work! I never want to see a ridiculously good-looking face here ever again! Ever! And don't come to me if you forget to store your nuts for the winter! It'll be a long, cold, nutless winter for you, I tell you! Mr. I know him! <laughs>